Hi, hi, you guys. Um, I wanted to share, share, share um, how I go about cutting my cards because I know that I've just recently been talking about how I got the in between um, tarot and I'm finding the borders on the bottom to be a little bit disruptive to the overall read and the understanding of the card. So I thought I'd just cut it off. And I talk so much about cutting off borders of my cards that um, I've had a few people like ask, like, how do I go about it? Because I'm, um, I used to be, well, I used to be a model maker. I have a degree in industrial design and I read tarot professionally. So I have excessive amounts of knowledge in, in micro little things. So I thought I'd show you um, the method that I use or the processes that I use and the things that I use so that I can get like seamless edges. I get repeat patterns. I get really good uh, quality out of the cards that I cut. Um, so I just thought I'd show you along and be completely excessive um, as I go about it. So forgive this. This is going to be in hand. So it's going to be a little bit shaky, but I'm going to show you um, most mostly start to finish and anything else that shows up in between. I will be watching comments from this end. So if you have specific questions on the products or the things that I'm using, just throw it in the comments and I'll answer as I possibly can. Um, so let me turn this around and you get to see my messy, messy desk. So plight of a designer. We have messy lives. So let me scoot that around. There we go. So you can see my plant <laughs> my outside. So um, my messy desk includes the deck that I'm cutting. So like I just mentioned, it's the in-between tarot. Um, and I'll talk to you about that and why about that in just a sec. I'm also going to be using a guillotine. This is a sharp one. Um, you always make sure that they're sharp because dull tools just might as well be cutting with spoons. I also use a, um, uh, anything that you can find that can be used as a fence. And by a fence, I mean um, something solid and rigid that you can double stick tape down onto your guillotine um, so that you can basically what I'm going to be doing is uh, putting the cards up against this because I'm trying to keep a 90 degree angle above all else. So I use a square. It's called a one, two, three square because it's one inch tall, two inches wide and three inches long. And model makers use those a lot for, um, for keeping 90 degree angles um, in things that they cut or things that they form or things like that. So it's a really awesome tool specifically for that. Um, but I keep it flush so I keep my edge up here flush against the edge of my guillotine, and then I double check to make sure that it is an actual 90 degree angle by um, connecting it to a square. So this square has been machine grayed at a 90 degree angle, and since I, above all else, want to make sure that my corners are flush and square, that's why I pull out obnoxiously strange tools. <laughs> Um, for double stick tape, you guys, if you ever, ever, ever get a hold of a roll of Neato uh, tape, this is the best double stick, st uh, double stick tape in the world. It's the only tape that I know that has such a strong bond that's actually removable. Um, so I used it in the machine shop. I used it in, in every form of model making. This was the roll that I got in college and that was five years ago. And I use it sparingly and buy it whenever I can. <laughs> so I have more rolls of it, but I'm just hoarding it at this point because it's such good stuff. But anyway, let me show you. Um, what I've done so far. So uh, I had talked about previously that I like the cards themselves. I find that the idea and the concept of depicting the space between the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups or any of the cards is wildly interesting. However, then calling it the Queen of Cups to me is disjointing because when I see Queen of Cups, I don't see this, right? Because I, I know what that looks like. Now, if you're thinking or trying to tell me the space between the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups is this, that makes total sense to me. Now I need to get rid of this, or at least that's how I feel about it, that I really want to basically eliminate that um, <laughs> textual visual disruption <laughs> is how I would describe it. So these are the ones that I've done so far. And just to show you the process and how um, I believe that it's working so far, I got, what, maybe less than 10 cards done. So I'm not going to do the whole deck in front of you, but um, this is hopefully I can get it to align. But you can see that my cuts are square. And square, I mean 90 degree angles. And they're pretty uniform. And that's why we use a fence is because we can cut once and do a repeat of the same cut over and over and over again without human error, or at least like greatly reducing the likelihood of human error. So the way I'm going to do go about it, I will talk to you about how I set this up, but I need two hands to actually do it. So I'll just tell you what I did instead of actually doing it. Um, and maybe in another time when I have a tripod or my wife holding it, then I can actually show you the process. But the way I did it is that I decided down here, like um, exactly how I want my cut to look. So of course, pretend that um, this, the straight line right here is all the way up here, right? So 
I've decided da 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 da. This is whereabouts the line I want to go. Like that's about as close to the line is I can get using my naked eye and also knowing that I'm going to have to cut that cutting directly on that line is impossible. Like don't stress yourself out trying to do it. So I'm going to try to cut a little bit more on this side of the line and just know that I'm going to cut a teensy weensy bit of the picture off, but nothing too terrible. Like that's the teensy weensy bout of the picture off. I mean, I could measure that if I really wanted to, but I'm pretty sure no one really cares. <laughs> so um, I'm going to cut a teensy weensy of the picture off and that is my template. So if I use this one, so what I'll do is I will close the guillotine, sorry, I'll close the guillotine just enough that I can re-scoot my card into it. There we go. I'll re-scoot the card into it. And the idea is to then move and or double stick the side. So you'll put double stick tape on one side of it. And then you're gonna move it into the edge of the card as close as possible, measuring and holding firm that this edge is square to this side. Ah, there we go. This edge is square to this side. That edge is firmly pressed up against that side. And this fence is smashed up as, as flush as possible to the inside edge of that card. Like that's, I want everything to be as 90, close to 90 degrees as possible. Being that I'm not a machine shop, this is only going to be so good, but this is really freaking close for a non-machine uh, <laughs> environment. And so once this fence has been um, double stick down, it's not going to move. It's not going to rock on me. So that gives me the ability to hopefully lift this up with one hand, <laughs> see if I can. Okay, I can't. So excuse me. There we go. Um, I can then put my card in, knowing that it's going to cut at the same place on all the sides. It's firm up against that side. It's flush up against this side. And so when I'm ready, I should be able to do this with my elbow without an issue. And I don't even have to be that slow with it. I can just chop. <laughs> this is so fun to do it one-handed. I'm probably giving everybody motion sickness. But anyway, the cut came out. It is square. And then you can compare your squareness to the squareness of your other squares that are around all these 90-degree angles that we love to have so much. So here's another, oops, sorry. Here's another way that I like to test it is actually using it on my square to see how flush it is. And so long as all my edges line up, and they do, I have a 90 degree angle. And so the reason that I'm aiming for such good 90 degree angles is because my corner rounder, excuse me, my corner rounder is going to need a 90 degree angle to create a tangent um, curve. And so by tangent, I mean straight edge here, straight edge here, and there's that's a radius. So that's a circle that's um, connected to the edges of two lines. Um, you need that to be a 90 degree angle for it to be perfectly round. So I have a four millimeter radius, I have a seven millimeter radius or a 10 millimeter radius. Um, I wonder how much this is. This looks like a four. I'm sorry. This looks like a four. So to keep it uniform, I may do the four millimeter on the bottom ones down here, just to kind of shorten the card and give it an overall uniformity and then decide what I'll be doing from there. I may edge these. I haven't decided as of yet um, if I'm going to, but I think that will at least, because like even just now, so far, that will give me, what do you call it? Just, it gets rid of that distraction of what this card is supposed to be instead of what the card actually is. So it's a little bit smaller, um, but not even by much. It's what, like, what, a quarter of an inch, maybe? Not even. And it gives me, or it gives me the opportunity to focus more on the individual, like, image of the card instead of the name of the card. So I think this is going to work out well for a trim set. So after I get done cutting all these, and this actually makes cutting so much faster because I hear a lot of people complain sometimes about how long it takes to cut. If you set it up like this, you can start turning out cuts in minutes. So... Like this deck, I have um, 20 minutes before I need to go and get dressed for my little date night tonight. And um, I, I suspect that I'll be able to get this done in maybe 10, 15 minutes. So 70, probably 70 cards now um, in about 10, 15 minutes, if, will be awesome. So hopefully my wife won't mind me making the floor a little <laughs> cluttery. And yeah, all my stuff here. Now, if I was cutting um, multiple sides, like if I was trimming all the way around, what I would do is just remove this. Um, fence and adjust it per side. So um, that would be the only thing that would turn into a longer project and that would probably take me 45 minutes or an hour. Um, but between a 
the doing all four sides, like it, that's not too bad at all. I think, um, regarding cutting off and trimming and then also keeping uniform edge. Cause usually it's, it's trying to get those edges nice. Um, I also kind of relish an imperfection. So even if I oops somewhere, it's, it just makes it more mine and more individually my deck. And I, I like doing good work, but I also am fine with imperfection. So Miss Kehlani, um, when your deck comes in, this is a process that I'll be using, um, to trim yours. Um, I <laughs> am exploring the idea of, uh, helping other people trim their cards because uh, <laughs> some people want this, this excessive hand to trim their cards for them. So Unless there's any questions on this or my process or what I'm doing, um, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up because it's so fun to show you guys how this um, ex uh, model maker, uh, previous industrial designer goes about um, keeping some pretty square edges and makes the trimming session pretty fast. Um, but yeah, you guys have fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for these couple minutes. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm so glad that makes so much more sense, uh, Miss Lauren. But yeah, if you guys have questions, feel free to throw them into the comments. I'll keep an eye on them over the next couple days, or you can always message me directly, and I'll uh, explain something or make a video on like a specific aspect that you had uh, asked about. So I have no problems at all explaining this further. Um, you guys take care. I will post pictures as soon as these are done because <laughs> now it's gonna be fun. All right, you guys. Bye.